Right, so today we're looking at part two of Richard and Kathleen from season one of 90 Day Fiancé UK. So far, Richard has come across as a vile and misogynistic pig and it seems Kathleen is running out of patience with him. Last time out, Richard arrived in the Philippines to see Kathleen for the first time in three years. On the first night, Richard asked her for a massage before passing out in bed. The following day, the pair got matching tattoos. And that evening, Kathleen confronted Richard over the fact that he hosted a nude pub quiz without her permission. He made it seem as though he could do whatever he likes because he has more money and he has the ticket to a life in the UK. But she she wasn't having any of it. This isn't the first time she's felt like he's betrayed her trust either, because the last time Richard visited her in the Philippines, Kathleen caught him messaging other girls on dating apps from her own phone. However, it's now the day after and she's hoping that they can put all of that behind them as she takes Richard home to meet her family. Unfortunately though, due to the fact that her family think he's a sex tourist looking to take advantage of her, things get off to a frosty start. I think I'm doing all right but I'm not getting anything back from Kathleen's papa, and he's the one that I need to impress. The whole interaction is just small talk, but not only does Kathleen's father not really say anything to Richard, he barely even makes eye contact. Whilst Richard obviously thinks he's being hard on him, given the way he's treated Kathleen in the relationship so far, I think he should count himself lucky that he even welcomed him into his home in the first place. Well, thank you very much for letting me stay with you, and it's, it's gonna be great. Yeah, not so sure about that one. Kathleen's father is well aware of Richard's previous indiscretions, so Kathleen has admitted that he's going to be the most difficult person for Richard to win over. Understandably though, he's far from the only person that doesn't approve of the relationship. Next up, the pair go to meet Kathleen's best friend Jen, who also already has strong reservations, and it doesn't take long for her concerns to be confirmed. Richard gets off to a terrible start by saying that the plan is to bring Kathleen to the UK so that she can get to work, before saying one of the most grossly chauvinistic sentences that have ever been uttered on this show. For me personally, wife stands for washing, ironing, fucking, etc. What an absolute tool. What kind of basement dwelling incel joke is this? How Kathleen can ever find this man desirable after hearing that is beyond me. But also, how is she ever going to look her best friend in the eye and be like, yeah, this is the man I want to marry? I'd be mortified. And it doesn't appear that this is just some incredibly inappropriate joke, because he actually goes on to double down on it all. I don't think I'm sexist, but there's jobs that girls like to do and there's jobs that boys like to do. There's nothing that I can do about that. Hate me all you want. Don't worry, we will. Also, that wasn't even the underlying point of the joke. The punchline wasn't women prefer to do these things, it was these are the main roles of a wife, as if all they're useful for is domestic work and physical gratification. I mean, don't get me wrong, I have nothing but respect for anyone who chooses to be a homemaker, but the problem is assigning the role exclusively to women based on nothing but their gender. Well, after that painfully unsuccessful meeting with Jen, they're heading off back home to once again try to win Kathleen's family's approval. But first, don't you hate it when you're abroad trying to keep up with shows like this, only to find out that they've been geo-blocked? Well, that's where NordVPN comes in. NordVPN is a virtual private network that allows you to change your virtual location with one click. With over 5,400 servers in 60 countries to choose from, you can change to a location where the content you're trying to access is freely available. Plus, for the content you are able to watch at home, you can also use NordVPN to change your virtual location to another country where the streaming platform subscription price is lower. And on top of all of that, NordVPN gives you amazing speeds thanks to Nordlinks, so no more bandwidth throttling. There are so many benefits to using NordVPN, so what are you waiting for? Get an exclusive NordVPN deal at nordvpn.com forward slash Arthur TV, which is risk free thanks to Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. Huge thank you to NordVPN for being today's video partner. Now back to the Philippines. So with Richard's current reputation with Kathleen's family in the gutter, fermenting alongside his morals, he's decided to try and purchase their love by buying them gifts. But as expected, his degenerate personality corrupted even this kind, albeit materialistic, gesture. Because his gift to Kathleen was uncomfortably short, short, short. I find it weird that Richard gave me a very short shorts in front of my parents. Um, it annoys me a little. Go and put your short shorts on. Alright. Yes. What's sad about this is that just beforehand, he gave Kathleen's parents jewellery featuring a cross, 
which as devout Christians, they really appreciate it. It was a really personal and thoughtful gesture that you could tell meant a good deal to them. It's such a shame you had to go on and completely ruin it with this. Oh, hello! <laughs> no, turn, turn, turn! Spin it around! <laughs> Oh, it's just so wildly inappropriate, isn't it? Again, how does he lack this much social awareness? Getting her short shorts as a gift to open in front of her family was weird enough, but to get her to put them on, spin around to show off her well-defined bottom, and then slap her thigh is just sick. Judging by Mama and Papa's faces, I may have ruined any goodwill. I don't think my humour is translating, to be honest. I may have gone too far. Well done, Richard. You're finally clocking on. You're like a weird mix between Sherlock Holmes and a giant naked mole rat. Seriously though, maybe just sit down and think about the implications of what you've just done. Don't get me wrong, buying your partner sexy clothes as a gift is perfectly fine, but getting them to open them in front of their parents who already think you're a sex tourist is not. And unfortunately, despite digging himself an even deeper hole with her family, he remains hard at work with a shovel in his hands. So next up, he decides to take Kathleen's father and brother out on the town for a few drinks. But whilst he's there, he just cannot take his eye off other women. There are some lovely ladies in this bar. I might have overstared for a few moments. Doesn't mean that I want them, it just means that they've got a great arse. I mean, it's obviously disrespectful, but also it's so stupid. He's there trying to win over her father and convince him that he's not a sex tourist, and he's spending the entire evening staring at the bums of other women. Like, what is he doing? It's disrespectful to Kathleen, it's disrespectful to her father, and it just completely reinforces the idea that everyone has of him. Kathleen's dad then sits down with him and says that so many foreigners that come to the country are bad people, but that Kathleen is a good girl, and Richard actually agrees with him. I, I know what some of the men do when they come to the Philippines. I only wanted to come and meet Kathleen. Didn't want to come and and, and and meet lots and lots of girls. Well, he's not acting like it, is he? Him saying that while staring at every woman that passes him is only going to make her father trust and respect him less because he's lying to his face. I think Kathleen's father can quite easily tell that Richard sees him as an obstacle that he needs to overcome, rather than a human being that he wants to develop a trusting and respectful relationship with. But despite admitting that Richard has his limitations, it seems only one thing is important to him. I Kathleen, 100% ang iyang gugma ni Richard. So ako sabay ko ni Kathleen sa gugma niya diha ni Richard. It's probably far from the approval that Richard wanted, but it seems, much to my surprise as I'm sure it is to yours, that he's actually got it. I kind of respect that Kathleen's father has so much trust in her too. It can't be easy feeling like you know better, but letting your child learn from their own mistakes anyway. Well, the following day is Richard's last in the Philippines. So, with several things still playing on her mind, Kathleen wants to have one final serious conversation with him. And the first thing she brings up is the possibility of him expressing an interest in other women just like he did the last time he was here. Nobody else in this world makes me as happy as you make. I've got over it. Are you it. sure I've you got, won't happen I've got, again? I've got over the... Are you the, sure? There's, there's, no, there's nobody else. Nobody else competes with you. I mean, he's saying all the right things, but his actions speak so much louder than his words. Like, how is she supposed to believe him when he's constantly got eyes for other women? I don't think it's enough just saying that that's how he feels. He needs to be a lot more reassuring that he's going to change his behaviour to make her feel like there's nobody else. We're going to bring you to the UK and we're going to get we're going to get married. We're going to have a great life. Are you excited? Yeah. She sure sounds it, and why wouldn't she be? She's leaving her family and home in the Philippines for a life of borderline slave labour under the rainy skies of Preston, England, with a man who doesn't respect her. And so, with that depressing final conversation, Richard's time in the Philippines comes to an end. And in the least surprising turn of events, as soon as he gets home, Kathleen ghosts him. Kathleen and I usually talk around 15 to 20 times a day, but she's not talking to me. She's just literally gone. Now, I'm not an advocate of ghosting at all. I'm of the opinion that no matter how you feel, you should always be a mature adult and communicate your feelings. However, when someone behaves the way Richard has behaved throughout their entire relationship and treats someone the way he treated Kathleen with absolutely zero respect or regard for her feelings, perhaps feeling that they don't deserve any courtesy in response isn't entirely unfair. I don't think after the last month that I've spent with her, I deserve to be just thrown out into the trash. I don't stop crying. 
how can he say he doesn't deserve this? I would love to know how he actually feels about the way he treated her. Does he genuinely deep down believe that doing things like looking but not touching, telling her he can do whatever he wants in the relationship but she can't, and reducing the relationship to money earner and money grabber, is being anything other than a trash partner. I mean, I'm sure he's telling the truth when he says that he doesn't stop crying, but maybe it'll hurt enough for it to be a wake up call and make him realize that he can't treat people like this. Kathleen makes me the happiest person in the world. When I'm with Kathleen, I feel like I can rule the world. Now I feel like I'm back just being me on my own. <gasps> Crikey, that is a sad sight, isn't it? Well, maybe if rather than just saying all of this now, he had actually made Kathleen feel like she made him the happiest person in the world whilst he had the chance, he wouldn't be sat there on the sofa nursing a pint in the middle of the day, wearing flip-flops that expose the couple's tattoo he got with the girl that's now completely ghosting him. Fortunately for him, even though he doesn't deserve it, Kathleen does indeed do the honourable thing and sends him a message. So Richard invites a friend over to look at it and give him some advice. She's put, sorry, I don't know what to say, but I am not happy anymore. Seems like it's done, mate, isn't it? The only thing I can think of is that perhaps, you know, it's a time of the month. Oh my word, this man is something else. He's actually so blatantly misogynistic. He's like a two-dimensional character written by an uninspiring author in a novel that went on to sell not even one copy. Blaming the fact that she's breaking up with him on her hormone cycle is so ridiculously cliche, it's almost funny. But this is why it's scary. He says it's the only thing he can think of. I'm almost struggling to accept it because I can't picture how anyone could be this dense. But maybe he really does have absolutely zero awareness of how he's behaved during this relationship. I did have a plan. Kathleen was going to move to the UK. She was going to pick up my socks. Life would have been brilliant. But now, I don't know what the future holds. I'm in limbo. I'm on my own. I'm alone. Even this, like there is absolutely zero mention of her meeting his family, them going on nice dates, being able to wake up next to each other, build a life together. The only thing he mentions is her picking up his socks. And no doubt when he says life would be brilliant, he's picturing her cleaning the house, cooking and paying the bills. So basically his plan of getting a free maid failed. How my heart weeps for him. I just feel lost. I feel like a lost puppy. This girl means the world to me. Sorry, one second. It's not her. Ah, oh, leaving that in is absolutely brutal. They had just been showing him calling her to no avail. He was sat there by himself with his phone on speaker with the call ringing and ringing and ringing and every single time it went to voicemail. The hope that lit up his face when he heard that ping, only for it all to come crashing down moments later. It is art. Frustratingly though, despite acting as if he's heartbroken by the rejection, it appears little Richard is already ready to move on. There are plenty more fish in the sea. And Richard's looking for a lady that provides a little bit of a spark in his belly and a little bit of a twinge in his pants. It's just so clear what he wants, isn't it? It's not Kathleen leaving him that he's been crying about. It's the fact that he's lost his hold on someone he thought he could manipulate into satisfying his demands. I'd bet my life savings that he's already messaged that woman from Malaysia begging to see her again, along with goodness knows how many other Asian women. I really hope things will work out with Kathleen but if they don't, I'll be okay. Because you can't keep King Richard down for long. Fun fact, King Richard I famously died of gangrene after being shot by a child wielding a crossbow. In the context of this story, I suppose Kathleen was the small child and the text message was the crossbow bolt. But although Richard claims to be wounded, it appears from his social media posts that he's well on his way to a full recovery. Shortly after that final episode aired, he posted this photo to Instagram, captioned, I've not even got to meet Jenny yet, plenty more Filipinas in the sea, already dressed as maids, thank you very much. Hashtag 90 Day Fiance UK, hashtag Filipina Girls, hashtag Hot Asian Babes. However, it looks like he hasn't yet found someone to couple up with him entirely, and neither Kathleen nor the Malaysian woman appear to have taken him back, because he also recently shared a meme that reads, You're single, I'm single, you know what that means? Nobody wants us. At least he's developed a slither of awareness, I guess. That said, his shamelessness appears to have reached new heights because in a desperate attempt to cash in on his 15 minutes of fame, he's currently offering meet and greets, DJ sets, quiz hosting, and to top it all off, he's currently selling his used t-shirts and underwear from his time in the Philippines. Whether he'll return for season two or 90 Day The Single Life, 
We're just gonna have to wait and find out. So if you enjoyed today's video, please feel free to subscribe down below for more sagas just like this one. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.